Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today has been on the show before, and she came back in honor of Earth Day, which is just a couple days from now. Her name is Suzanne Frazier. She is the president and co-founder of Beach. We're going to figure out what that stands for. I know, but you might not have seen the last show. And she really does some wonderful work in Hawaii. And she's wearing one of her handmade, homemade headdresses in my favorite color. Please welcome Suzanne to the show. You always look so nice with, what, what do you call what you're wearing? It's called a lei po'o or a head lei. Is that very popular in Hawaii where you live? That's a traditional lei um, that people wear when they're doing hula, chanting. Um, it's part of Hawaiian culture. Did, it, I, I would love a class on how to make these. Yes. Um, well, I, the last time I was on your show, I made a lei made of lawai fern, and it was made by braiding, just like you braid your hair. Um, but today the lei that I'm wearing is made with raffia. Um, so it's made by binding uh, the raffia around. Um, yeah. So. Well, it's, it's quite beautiful. How long does one of those last? Um, if you um, mist it, you know, with some water and put it um, in the fridge, it can last um, several days. They're beautiful. I, I bet people, do people get married in those? Oh, definitely. Yes. And are they traditionally worn by women? Women and men, actually. Nice. Yes. Nice. Great. Well, so, um, you know, what I, I love about your work is you, well, obviously you care about animals too, but so many people, at least the people I know, most of them seem to have become vegan or plant-based for health reasons, many for ethical reasons, but the environment seems to be an af not, not an afterthought, but you know, uh, younger people maybe today, but not, not 30, 40 years ago, people weren't going plant-based or vegan because of environmental concerns. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a big deal now. Oh, definitely. Yes. With climate change for sure. Yeah. yeah. When did you become so interested in this? Um, I was a uh, vegetarian in childhood because um, I care about animals. And then um, I gradually started uh, reducing other um, things in my diet um, with dairy being last. Um, but before that, it was um, fish and seafood. And uh, what led me to stop eating fish and seafood was the plastic problem because it's so horrendous. Um, I was out on beaches, watching the next load of plastic washing in and it just looked like vomit coming out of the ocean. And the more and more I learned about it, I realized that this stuff, this mess is actually toxic. It's not just ordinary plastic, but it's plastic with chemicals that have attached onto it in the ocean, um, causing lots of harm. So, um, and then of course I learned more and more about how animals are affected by plastic marine debris, how the fishing industry is the top polluter. You know, there's just so many reasons why not to eat fish and seafood. Um, so um, I was glad I'd already given that up, um, you know, some years before I started this work. Yeah, so many people that say they don't eat meat still, they don't consider seafood a living creature for some reason. <laughs> That, yeah, it's very odd. Um, you know, uh, I had quite a, a, a deep relationship with my fish. Um, you know, my pet fish that I had uh, really understood everything. Even when I had to clean its tank, you know, it'd hop in the net. And, you know, it was uh, really sad when it died, you know. So I, um, you know, they're absolutely living beings. Absolutely. Well, I can see from your sign that BEACH stands for, well, you could say it because now that you're- Environmental <laughs> Awareness Campaign Hawaii or BEACH for short. That's neat. And you're the co-founder. I'm the co-founder um, with my husband, Dean. Uh, 15 years ago, we founded the organization. And that's because no one else was taking action on the issue of plastic marine debris on the island where we live uh, on Oahu. And there was a need to do um, 
real action about this problem because no one thought it was their job. You know, people were just coming to the beach, putting out the towel and sitting down with all this debris all the way around them and seemingly taking no notice of it. And um, it was pretty horrifying and shocking to find that it was a lot of little pieces broken up all along the shoreline. It wasn't easy to clean up at all. And Dean and I started bringing, you know, um, buckets and so on to collect the debris and while we were there, more would wash in. Um, so we started organizing cleanups with um, other volunteers and worked with other organizations. And it just seemed like we had to do more than just clean up, that we needed to raise awareness, educate, um, and, and take actions to prevent and reduce this problem at the source. So that's what we're currently doing is researching the problem of plastic marine debris out of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is twice the size of the US in total area. Um, and we're looking for where did this come from? What country, what industry, what manufacturer, who might have used this? Um, and how do we um, reduce this problem at the source? How do we prevent it? What are some recommendations? at the local, state, national and international level. So I'm happy to say um, that we've been accepted to the seventh International Marine Debris Conference taking place this year. Um, and uh, we hope to be presenting um, our findings at that conference. Where and, where and when is this conference? Uh, the conference is in Korea in September. Um, but due to COVID, I'm hoping to uh, attend online, um, yeah, rather than travel. Wow. Is your organization only in Oahu or is it all throughout Hawaii? Uh, we have members all throughout Hawaii and actually on the mainland and internationally. Um, but our work encompasses the whole state because we've actually taken actions to ban different things like smoking, uh, cigarette butts or another type of plastic. And we initiated a smoking ban across the whole state um, that passed at the legislature. We also helped to um, initiate a bill to ban plastic, uh, sorry, to ban balloon releases. Um, and that is also a statewide bill. Uh, we visited other islands to do outreach cleanups litter prevention, plastic reductions of different campaigns and, and work um, all across Hawaii. Do other states in the United States have a similar organization? There are many organizations um, in the states and across the world that do work to do with plastic and reducing it and legislation and education. Um, but I think what's very unique about our organization is that we're one of the only a couple that I know of, um, a very small handful of organizations that are nonprofits that are actually researching this issue of marine debris out of the uh, Great Pacific garbage patch and looking for the sources. Um, it's very difficult, tedious work that takes a very long time um, and, um, you know, very few organizations are doing that kind of detailed work. Yeah. Well, why can't we just stop plastics in general? If we didn't, have, if we didn't have plastic manufactured for the reasons it's being manufactured, we wouldn't have the problem. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds good. And, you know, there's many, um, people promoting zero waste and all of that sort of a thing. Um, but we actually don't, talk about that um, because it's in this day and age um, it's unrealistic to get rid of all plastic um, because the computer we're talking on right now is made of plastic parts and the car we're going to get in later on is got plastic and the light fitting above me is plastic and you know there's medical devices that are made of plastic so you know we can't have zero waste or plastic free or any of that stuff. And I think that sometimes people get really down when they try to go on 
a plastic free diet, um, a plastic free lifestyle, um, because it's really not doable in today's age. But what is doable is not using the disposable items or the, um, well, I've, I've got a lot to say about the word single use, um, but there are some single use items that we really don't need and there's disposable items we don't need. And, um, you know, there's a lot we can do to use a lot less plastic and to use alternatives. And that's really where we start. And also um, we focus our organization's mission and efforts on the most harmful plastics, the ones that are harmful to marine life. I mean, you could say that they're all harmful, but there's some even more harmful than other ones. So, um, you know, and I gave a couple of examples just a moment ago about cigarette butts. They're made of plastic, um, even though they don't look like it. Um, and lots of people litter them um, and they have um, all kinds of dangerous chemicals in them. And fish can die, you know, within a, an hour, I think. If you put fish in a bucket of water with cigarette butts, they can die within an hour. Um, and balloons are just super harmful because they have string and ribbons that can wrap around, you know, animals and, um, and injure them through entanglement. But also the balloons turn all gooey inside the animal um, and it can't be moved through their digestive system and it ends up blocking them up um, and, and causing blockages and um, starvation and death. So it's one of the most lethal forms of um, marine debris are balloons. Yeah. I mean, I love balloons, but not, I mean, knowing what they do, I, I rethink, you know, I rethink them now. Like, but I learned so much from you last time. Oh, um, oh thank you. Think, yeah. I don't think people realize how much plastic is in their life unless they watch a show like this. Yes, that's true. Well, I mean, uh, even researching for this show, I'm blown away um, by what the next things are that, that have been discovered. Um, it's, it's really, to be honest, I'm horrified, you know. Um, when I found out about hot filling, which I talked about in your last show, um, I was just so horrified about that, you know, because who knew? Who knew these Tetra Packs were lined with the same plastic as the water bottle and were heated up to nearly boiling temperature. I mean, they just look like harmless cardboard boxes on the shelf. You know, you kind of thought, had that good feeling of I'm not choosing a plastic bottle, you know, when you're taking it off the shelf. But in actual fact, your nut milk um, and so on is in um, plastic. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much plastic um, that we're not even aware of, you know, like plastic and chewing gum and in the gum base and so on, um, all the microbeads. Um, yeah, the, the plastics industry has done a really incredibly amazing job, really, of getting plastic into ev almost every facet of our lives, you know, sometimes without our knowledge. And certainly, um, most of the time, I would say, without people's understanding that it isn't just harmless plastic, every plastic thing has chemicals in it. So when we're talking plastic, we, we, we should be talking petrochemicals, you know, we should be talking oil and petroleum, because that's where this is coming from, is fossil fuels, fracking, you know, um, and tons of these nasty, nasty chemicals in it. Yeah. So what can we do? How can we help? Well, there's just so much that people can do. And so with today's show, I wanted to kind of um, get going on solutions. Um, we're going to uh, look very briefly at some of the latest research just to you know, keep up to date. Um, but uh, I'd really like people to grab a pen and a paper because we're going to be um, making a list that you can put on your fridge and um, look at throughout the year um, about what you can do to um, take steps to reduce your plastic footprint. 
and and we're going to start today <laughs> you know it's not like a long you know we're going to wait or anything like that um we've got on the, on this handout actually we've got today this week next month and this year so if you can grab a piece of paper please and um put steps to reducing my plastic footprint at the top okay i've got my paper and my purple pen i'm ready oh, lovely. To go. <laughs> So steps to reducing my plastic footprint and then actions I am taking to make a difference starting. That's your next sentence. Actions I am taking to make a difference starting and then put today on the left and leave some space. Then put this week and, and leave some lines if you've got line paper. Um, and then you've got next month. And then after that, this year. So um, like I said in the last show, I don't expect people to like do 30 things today, you know. So that's why we've got today, this week, next month, this year. So that's one, two, three, four things. So you can find four things from today's show um, that you're going to do that are new. And sometimes people tell me, oh, I, I, don't, I don't have anything new that I can do. I'm doing it all, <laughs> you know. Um, and I can tell you that even I, you know, I've been teaching this work for 15 years. Um, even I find new things to do. Um, so how, how I've worked with people who, who can't think of anything new and maybe they're doing everything I'm going to be talking about today, um, here's a suggestion for those people is uh, write a list of all the things you are already doing and that will help you identify um, where the gaps are. Great. Thanks. You're I welcome. love doing stuff like this. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show and this great opportunity to speak with your amazing audience that you have. Well, thank you. I appreciate your work and I love your state. I love Hawaii. <laughs> thank you. So you just want us to fill this out. You're not giving us like any guidance or hints or anything. like. Oh, that. so this is, we're getting ready for the presentation. Oh, okay, good. Cause I was having trouble doing it on my own. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no. I, this is, this is, we're getting prepped <laughs> for the presentation. So so as I go through the presentation, um, think about the um, solutions that I'm suggesting and then, you know, add them to those categories. Is this something that you feel that you could do today or is this something that you think it will be a this year thing or maybe you can do it um, this week um, and next month, you know. So come up with at least four things, one for each of those um time periods and um there's chat right on the on the zoom yeah people can chat with each other sure yeah so i would suggest too i'd love to see what you guys are coming up with if you want to share that in the chat um because it might inspire other people um you might have some different solutions to offer um you know i'd love to see your solutions okay So would you like me to start? Yes, on please, please. I'm, show? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, what happened to you? There we go. Can you see everything? I can't see anything. Oh, really? Right. I only see you. Oh. Are you pushing the, the screen share button? Oh, do I have to push screen share? Hold yes. on. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, screen share. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Oh, okay. And then if you just change the viewing, yeah, it'll be in a slideshow. Perfect. Yeah, I'm brand new to Google Slides because our computer's too old and wouldn't make 
wouldn't uh, work on the PowerPoint. <laughs> All right. Do you see this button down the bottom or not? Uh, I don't know what you mean, but I see your logo. The Zoom one. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. Um, so today's presentation is called Love the Earth, Love Your Body. And this is Chef AJ Live, Tuesday, the 19th of April, 2022, which is Earth Month. Okay, why aren't we moving? There we go. Whoops. All right, so topics to be covered today. We're going to talk about the earth, the importance of the ocean, latest news on plastic, resources and action, the 20 R's because three just isn't enough, <laughs> how beach is making a difference, every day is Earth Day, and questions and answers. So our earth is 4.5 billion years old and was formed, the, oh, sorry, the ocean was formed 3.8 to 3.5 billion years ago. Life began in the ocean 3.4 to 3.1 billion years ago. And by 400 million years ago, there was enough oxygen that had accumulated in the atmosphere for the evolution of air breathing land animals. The ocean covers 71% of the earth's surface. But why is the ocean so important to our everyday lives? The phytoplankton in the ocean provides 50 to 85% of the oxygen we breathe. So in other words, more than every second breath that we breathe comes from the ocean. And not only does oxygen come from the ocean, but also the water we drink. The ocean is the key element for the existence of life on Earth as it contains 97% of all the planet's water. So, you know, we, we wouldn't even be alive without our beautiful ocean um, giving us life. And, you know, it's so important to protect it. 99% of all habitable space on Earth is in the ocean. So actually our planet should be called planet ocean uh, rather than planet earth because only 1% of, of livable space is actually earth. There are five ocean gyres on our planet and they're all garbage patches now. There's the Indian Ocean, the North Pacific and South Pacific subtropical gyres and the North Atlantic and South Atlantic gyres. And Hawaii is in the middle of the biggest one, which is the North Pacific subtropical gyre. And it's spitting up plastic on our shorelines, kind of like ocean vomit, just vomiting up the plastic. Um, this is a photo that I took at Kahuku Beach, which is on the north side of um, the island of Oahu, where we are. And as you can see, it's a lot of broken up little pieces of plastic because that's what plastic does. It breaks up into smaller and smaller pieces until you get down to plastic dust and nano sized particles um, that are never going to go away because plastic lasts forever. That's the true timeline for plastic. And, um, you know, Plastic isn't just an environmental issue, um, but it's also a human health issue. And there have been some very recent studies, um, this one coming out in April this year, um, about the toxicological impacts of microplastic exposure in human cells. And they're finding that people are exposed to microplastics daily through ingestion and inhalation. And this one um, also uh, recent, this is in December, 2021, microplastics can kill human cells at concentrations found in the environment. So, um, you know, plastic is finding its way onto our um, plate <laughs> um, and, we're actually ingesting or inhaling, well, ingesting microplastics, possibly inhaling um, nanoparticles. 
and um, it can harm our own selves. In this study, uh, this is um, September, I believe. Let me check my notes here. Yes, September last year, um, they found that um, babies um, have higher levels of microplastics in their poop than adults do. And what kinds of plastic they found were polyethylene, um, which comes from polyester, possibly from carpet and so on, um, and, and polycarbonate. Um, in this um, study, this one was, uh, let me check the date of this one. Uh, this was August 2018, um, they found that microplastic debris is an emerging issue for food security and food safety and human health. And um, what they found was that plastic is made with chemicals, like I was saying earlier, but it also in the ocean accumulates what's called persistent organic pollutants like DDT and PCBs up to a million times more concentrated on the surface of the plastic than, the, than in the surrounding seawater. Um, I, I spoke about that last time, but what this study is also saying is besides the pups, the persistent organic pollutants, and besides the plastic manufacturing chemicals, toxic metals also accumulate onto plastic in the ocean, as well as pathogens such as E. coli and microbes. Um, and that plastic, because it travels around the globe in the ocean, can cause the spread across the globe of viruses and so on. Um, and recently I was reading yet another study um, that was doing experiments. Um, I haven't been able to find anything um, showing that they um, have found this in the wild, but they've actually done experiments where they've put plastic in with like sewage sludge that has pharmaceuticals in it, like from, you know, diabetes drugs and heart disease drugs and antibiotics and all this sort of a thing. And they found that the plastic was absorbing those. Um, so, you know, these are all good reasons why not to eat seafood and not to eat fish because, you know, plastic that these animals are ingesting um, contains all these horrible things that you really don't want in your body, like pups, like BPA and styrene and toxic metals and pathogens and, you know, um, and possibly pharmaceuticals as well. Um, because when, when say microbeads and microfibers go down the drain um, and they're not collected by wastewater systems, but they are going through those systems as are the pharmaceutical drugs going through those wastewater systems. Um, and there's the, the possibility where the plastic comes in contact with those pharmaceuticals and um, absorbs them. And then they're all released out into the ocean um, and the animals at the bottom of the food chain, which are the plankton, ingest the plastic with all that cocktail mix of different things on it. And the chemicals and, and so on are passed throughout the food chain um, to the animals at the top, which, which includes humans. Um, and this is very recent, um, this one about blood. Um, you know, last time I was talking about nanoplastic particles and how small they've got and how they can permeate cell membranes and possibly get in the blood. And then look at this article. This study came out in March 2022 um, that proved that um, there is plastic in human blood. Um, and these were healthy volunteers and uh, they proved that particles can be absorbed across membranes in the human body um, and that these nanoplastic particles can um, move in the blood to, you know, just about anywhere in your body, really. Um, and the types of plastic um, included um, polymers of styrene, um, PETE, which is the polyethylene, 
Um, PMMA, which is um, a microbead type plastic um, and other types of polyethylene. So, um, you know, this, even though I kind of knew about this sort of thing, that it was a possibility, it really blew me away that, that they've actually discovered this and very recently. Um, and then the next thing that happened, this one hasn't even come out yet because the date on it is, um, well, in publication, I guess. Um, it's online though. Uh, the date of this study is July, 2022. Um, and, um, excuse me, and this one is about detecting microplastics in human lung tissue. Um, and they've discovered polypropylene and polyethylene um, in human lung tissue from people undergoing biopsies for, um, uh, you know, lung cancer and so on. Um, and then another one, another recent study, um, this one about finding microplastics in the human placenta. So, um, yeah, and this, this was a, um, a study back in uh, 2020 about plastic ingestion by marine fish is widespread and increasing, which is not surprising because there's so much plastic out there. Um, so I, I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, uh, alarm everybody and, and take up the presentation with a whole lot of, um, you know, information that gets everybody down, because um, I really want you guys to feel empowered um, about making change possible. And, you know, knowledge is empowerment you know because if you're informed um then you can make better decisions and better choices um so this is the handout that um i was uh, describing before and this is also another handout on plastics and chemicals um, and solutions and these are the types of, of plastic um, i was just mentioning some of those in the study um, so number one is that polyethylene type of plastic. This is the one that lines the Tetra packs. Um, number two is the high density polyethylene. Three, PVC, very dangerous, that one. Um, low density polyethylene, number four. Polypropylene, number five, that was in one of the studies. Um, in, they found that in lungs. Um, and number six, polystyrene. Um, that was found in blood, um, the different styrene copolymers. Um, and number seven is other, um, including polycarbonate. Um, so uh, this brochure is available on our website uh, if you'd like to access that and um, have a place to get all the information uh, that I covered in the last um, talk. Um, and the back side of the brochure includes um, information about estrogenic activity, more information about phthalates, how they're harmful, bisphenol A, um, and so on, um, and also about microbeads and um, safer choices and so on. So... <laughs> This is brand new. Uh, we have developed um, this uh, 20 R's of environmental action because the usual three R's of reduce, reuse, recycle are just not enough. You know, it hasn't been um, really making enough of a difference, I don't think, um, especially the recycling one. Um, Recycling plastic is just a really difficult thing to do right. And really it, it just hasn't been working. Um, so I'll, I'll say quite a bit more about that later. Um, but this is 20 hours of environmental action that our organization has come up with. Um, and we're gonna go through each one um, but just quickly, uh, here they are, reuse, regrow, reduce, refill, refuse, replenish, rent, repair, repurpose, redesign, restore, reclaim, responsibility, respect, 
rethink. Chef AJ was mentioning rethink um, at the beginning. Um, redirect, research, return, re rediscover, and lastly, recycle. So um, starting with reduce, and these aren't really in, in any order. Um, one of the easiest things you can do to reduce is just use less, like only buy what you need. Um, you know, do I need it is a good thing to ask yourself before you buy something or get something. Um, and of course, reducing is the opposite of overconsumption. And since 2013, I believe it is, the word single use have been used over and over again all over the world and even by environmental groups and governments and, you know, scientists and so on, um, as well as the general public. And what's so concerning about that is because they're use it being used wrongly, you know, because plastic bottles and plastic bags, plastic utensils, plastic cups, plastic plates are not and have never been single use and neither are their compostable compo uh, counterparts single use. So if you've got a compostable bag or a compostable utensils or compostable plates and cups, um, you know, made of corn or so on, they can actually be washed and reused. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, nobody thought like this you know, about these items being single use. That was just not even in the vocab, those words single use. Because if you're thinking single use, then you're thinking of one-time use, use it, throw it out, buy another one, use it again, throw it out, buy another one, you know. And that's what the plastics industry wants us to do. They want us to think in a wasteful way and they want us to act in a wasteful way so that we then buy more and more and more. Um, and so, and strangely, well, I guess, I don't know, it's, it's just strange that, you know, people who should know better really in the, in the environmental um, field are, are using this. They're saying these things are single use, but they're not saying what really is single use. What is really single use are things like cigarette butts, microbeads, um, K-cups, the, the K cups that aren't reusable, um, pods, you know, for the dishwasher and the washing machine, um, you know, zip ties that you use for an event once and cut um, straw wrappers, you know. So really the, the true single use items are the things that you can't ever use again because they're dirty and you can't clean them. Like for instance, um, polystyrene foam clamshells and plates and so on. If you've had like, you know, tomato spaghetti sauce all over them, um, you can't clean that, right? You can scrub it, um, but it's still gonna have that, that reddish orange stain on it. Um, so, and also we know that when you put hot food in polystyrene, um, it actually loses weight and it leaches the chemical styrene out of the container. So obviously polystyrene foam cups and plates and clamshells, those are single use. You do actually want to use those once and throw them out. Um, and by the way, <laughs> I'm not encouraging use of those at all um, because the styrene is really toxic. Um, but, um, and straw wrappers, food wrappers, candy wrappers, you know, you rip them open. Um, you can't put them back together again. You can't use them for another use. Um, so obviously those are single use. But as far as plastic bottles, plastic bags, utensils, cups, plates, those are disposable. They, they're not reusable. Like they're not made as long-term reusable items that would be made of glass and metal and so on but they are made for a for many uses before they break or something and then you would need to throw them out so whenever I've um, been in the situation where you're unable to um, 
you know, you, you kind of, in a way you have to take the, the plastic, like if you're on a plane or something like that, um, you know, we actually have brought the cup home with us in our bag um, and washed it out and reused it. Um, or, if, if, or if you're somewhere and someone gave you a tasting spoon, you know, for gelato or something, um, we've actually brought those spoons home and reused them for feeding the cat, you know, um, baby food, you know, when they're sick or something like that. So, um, you know, it's, we really need to get out of this whole mindset that, there, that these things are even single use at all, um, you know, because all it's doing is causing a lot, a lot of waste. And it's two types of wasting. <laughs> One is wasting your money, you know, because you have to keep buying new stuff all the time. Um, and the other one is making a lot of waste in the trash. Um, and when I was a kid um, and, you know, we had, you know, family functions and so on, you know, and, and the plastic came out of the cupboard, everything would go back to the kitchen to be washed. All the utensils would be, all the plastic utensils would be washed, all the plastic cups would be washed, and it would all be put away again for next time because there was just no such thing as buying all these things that are perfectly good and using them once and throwing them out that would just be wrong and it is still wrong um so we've just got to get out of that mindset of um of this so-called um single-use culture okay refuse this is this is so easy <laughs> this is one of the easiest ones to do is just say no thanks to all of the unnecessary plastic um like when you go to a restaurant you can say this it's a good thing to say this at the beginning is no straw please because otherwise they might bring you a drink with a straw in it um when you're ordering say your vegetarian sushi although I, these days I don't eat sushi um, because I don't eat sea, seaweed or anything out of the ocean because of how contaminated the ocean is. Um, but, um, you know, we don't really need that. We don't need at all that green grass plastic thing in the sushi, do we? I mean, does it make our life better? Of course not. Um, it just ends up littered on a beach somewhere. We've found so many of those um, at Hanama Bay, which is, a place where lots of lots of people go, um, you know, for the day and tourists and so on. And that there's a lot of sushi eating, I guess, going on because we find these these green grass plastic things there. Um, and there's other things like airsoft. You know, that is such a bad game to let children play. Is run around outside shooting plastic pellets at people. Um, not only does it harm them, but it's a littering game because the kids and teenagers are telling us they're using up to 10,000 of these pellets per person per game. And of course, they're not scrounging around the grass trying to find them all to pick 10,000 pellets up before they go home. They just leave them there. Um, and they're the right size to be ingested by marine life. And I've actually had the opportunity um, recently to take a look at marine debris, plastic marine debris that has been inside dead seabirds and there were airsoft pellets in the debris. Um, so it's really sad because these airsoft pellets and other plastics harm animals through blocking um, causing blockages and starvation and so on. Um, other things to say no to are all those terrible, awful dishwashing and laundry pods. So if you have any of those at home, um, you know, they'll say something like it dissolves. You know, I have to say there's no magic solution. Plastic doesn't do dissolving or biodegrading or any magical thing where it disappears it's actually something that lasts forever um, it causes clogs in your washing machine or your dishwasher um, and you, you're not going to want that um, and they're actually also finding the the pva the polyvinyl alcohol in sewage sludge you know so it's it's not going away it's actually toxic to fish. 
um, and the environment. So please don't use those. If you do have them, slit them open, don't waste it, but slit them open, pour the packet into the dishwasher and then throw the plastic, I mean, sorry, pour the contents of the packet, <laughs> pour the contents of the packet into the dishwasher or if it's a laundry pod, pour it into the laundry and throw that outer um, plastic packet away, please. Um, you know, K cups are another thing to say no to. Condiment and sauce packets. So if you're, you know, out getting takeout food, um, hopefully there's a bottle of sauce there for you to put it on um, and not a packet of sauce. Um, and Chef AJ, you, you travel with your own sauce, right? And that, and those bottles. Right. And I always refill. I try to always refill. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I tried those vinegars and boy, were they amazing. <laughs> I have to say, um, really terrific. Um, and then, um, water balloons are another bad littering game, um, that we've seen kids playing at schools and we've seen the results of it in parks, you know, with families and so on. It might seem like a fun and good game and all of that sort of a thing, but it's a littering game and leaves a lot of mess behind. Um, anyway, okay, uh, reusing, this is a good one, um, is buying good quality reusable items because they're gonna last a lifetime instead of buying cheap disposable things that are going to break eventually. Um, but as I mentioned before, if you do get something that's disposable, but not single use, um, please keep it and wash it and use it again and again for either the original purpose or another purpose. Um, so in this photo here, we've got um, hot food thermoses. This is what we take our lunch to work in every day um, is we make our vegan gluten-free pasta um, and we put it in these thermoses and it's still hot for our lunch um, several hours later. Um, next to that, we've got some bamboo utensils. Um, again, we travel with these, we bring them to work, we put the, pack them in our suitcase when we travel. Um, they're very handy to have. And the next thing is a coffee filter made of stainless steel. So this is instead of um, using um, paper ones and definitely not using K-cups. Um, and then uh, on the right-hand side are cotton produce bags. And we also have mesh um, cotton produce bags made of organic cotton. Um, and this is so that you don't have to get fruit and vegetables in plastic. Um, but there's many other uh, reusable items like insulated vacuum sealed um, drink bottles that keep your drinks either cold or hot, um, reusable straws made of glass, bamboo or metal are great. Um, you can get takeout coffee cups um, that are made of ceramic or they have uh, nice ones um, with glass. Um, and then, um, of course, reusable bags, you know, made of uh, cloth are really good. Um, and so we travel with all, all these things, actually. We, we pack our reusable bags, our reusable utensil sets. We even bring glass bowls with us, you know, um, and so on. So I hope you guys are filling out your form. I don't know if you've already done it or we've got some more coming up um but just keep in mind about you know what what are you going to do today this week next month this year okay here's the next one regrow um i love this one um when i was a kid and went shopping with my mom um lettuce came <laughs> With, it was a huge thing, you know, it had all the outer leaves and it was all dirty um, and uh, got wrapped up in newspaper at the supermarket. And then when we got home, it was actually our job, the kids' job, to take all the outer leaves off and wash the lettuce for lunch. 
Um, these days, lettuce is coming with all the outer leaves gone um, and either all cleaned and processed and packeted, packeted in um, and broken up into plastic packets um, or some plastic box with, you know, the core of the lettuce there with all the outer leaves gone. Um, so what we've decided to do is um, these, these beautiful, delicious butter lettuces, um, they came with all the roots on. So we just replanted them um, at home. And now all we have to do to get lettuce now is just walk outside and pick some leaves off the lettuce. And we have delicious um, homegrown lettuce. And there's, there's other vegetables um, that you can buy in the supermarket that come with roots on that you can regrow. Okay, refill. Um, so, you know, I told you I'm not, I, you know, I'm doing a lot of these things, um, but there's some I'm not doing yet. And this is actually one of them that I'm investigating. Um, so I, I, I'm, you know, I'm putting it up today. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I'd love to hear from you guys if, if any of you have tried this or not. Um, but I came across uh, this company called Blue Land and they have these um, tablets that you put into a reusable bottle made of glass and then you add water because they um, are marketing, you know, the whole thing of that, why buy the water in the detergent bottle when you could just buy the tablets in a paper packet? Uh, so it sounds like a really great idea and I'm going to try this out. Um, and this, this whole thing is about refill. So look for options to refill items and save your containers instead of throwing them out and buying more if there's this opportunity to refill. Um, and again, this is not a new idea. Um, I mean, the detergent one might be a new idea, but the whole idea of refilling something was going on when I was a kid. Um, you know, back in the day um, when we had milk delivered to the house, um, it was delivered in glass bottles. And then we would put the crate out, the, the metal crate with the empty bottles, and they would get sterilized and refilled. You know, the milkman picked up the empty ones and dropped off the, the milk. Um, and with soda bottles, um, they were all glass and they'd all be returned to um, the bottle company and sterilized and refilled. Um, so this whole idea of refilling um, got lost along the way um, when plastic came in. Uh, but I think we really need to go back to refilling because it's um, one of the least wasteful ways to, um, you know, get our, our products is, is being able to refill them. Replenishing. So uh, we have a worm bin outside. Uh, we live in a, um, a condominium complex in a townhouse, so we don't have a whole lot of room, um, but we do have a little square of our courtyard where we have a worm bin and we feed the worms um, the food scraps and it's really reduced how much waste goes in the rubbish bin. Um, and so, you know, we feed like leftover banana peels and avocado shells and so on. Um, and the, so that's what's on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side is the vermicast. Um, this photo didn't come out as well as we would like. It's actually richer than this looks. It's actually a very deep, um, dark brown, black color. Um, and you can see some worms in there. Um, and the vermicast can be added back to and replenish the soil. So we use it on our gardens, we use it in our pots, you know, when we're growing plants and um, herbs and lettuce and so on. Repairing. So this is another thing that's got lost along the way. Um, in preparing for this talk, I was reading other websites about, you know, the six hours, the seven hours, the eight hours. Nobody had 20 hours. Um, I think the most were 14 hours. Um, and I came across a, 
a website about the different R's that said, oh, repairing was something people did 100 years ago. And I nearly fell off my chair because I was like, what? 100 years ago? It wasn't that long ago that that people were repairing things. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm how old am I? I'm 54. And um, people were definitely repairing things when I was a kid um, and a teenager. It's in more recent times that this whole idea of built-in obsolescence has come about. And um, that's really unfortunate. Um, it seemed to take place around the time of, of computers coming in. And, um, you know, these days it, it, it is harder to repair things um, because the parts are often not available. Um, and it really hurts when you have to, um, you know, say goodbye to a computer after five years, you know, like, uh, I was mentioning that that this presentation is on Google Slides today. Thank goodness for Google Slides because um, we were trying to prepare it on our, our old computer because the newer computer broke down and we took it to three places to be repaired and um, they all refused and told us that there were no parts and all of this sort of a thing. And I mean, five years of $3,000 computer breaking down in five years, um, Apple, Mac, you know, we just were really disappointed with that. Um, and we really, as consumers, need to demand that companies change this whole idea um, because it's encouraging so much waste of course, they want to make a whole lot of money from you having to buy a new computer. Um, but in order not to buy a new computer, we actually had this old computer, the one I'm talking to you on now, we took it into a place um, that does updates and we had the whole thing updated so that we could access websites and things like that because we really refused to take part in this whole idea of just buy another one buy another one, you know, um, and our, our nonprofit didn't have the money either to come up with another $3,000 for a, a new computer. Um, but, you know, I think if consumers start demanding that, hey, you know, we want to repair this TV, we want to repair this computer, we want to repair these electronics and so on, um, you know, maybe they'll start making the parts um, for that. Um, so wherever you can fix before you replace um don't buy new stuff when you can repair what's already there so you know sew up the holes um you know in your reusable bags or your your um clothing um you know i i wear my clothing over and over again for as long as it lasts um you know, because clothes are also contributing to um, the problem. Of course, you know, I, I buy, you know, cotton and, and those sort of things and not, not the plastic clothing now that I know about microfibers. Um, but um, repairing an item extends its useful life. And if it still works, why throw it out? You know, just keep, keep using it. Repurposing. So repurposing is um, different from reusing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on. It's okay. I, pre I um, apologize for our landline ringing. Um, so repurposing an item is different from reusing. Repurposing is about finding a different use for that item um, than the original use. So um, what examples of that are, uh, we get uh, vegan coconut yogurt in glass, and then we keep all the glass jars because they're so useful. Um, we're actually using them um, over at the research lab for storing marine debris in, um, you know, the micro pieces and so on. Um, but we also use them for storing small items like screws and so on. Um, I like to use boxes, you know, if um, different food items come in a, in a cardboard box, um, I cut off the top and use it as a small rubbish bin on the side door of my, of the car. 
so I can put any rubbish in there. Um, you know, so this is um, something where people can be creative, you know, how can you repurpose um, an item uh, in a creative way and, and give it a new life um, rather than throwing it out. Redesign. So this is um, where we can take action to ask companies to redesign their products to use environmentally friendly packages instead. Um, a good example of asking companies to redesign their products are those makers of the nut milks and coconut water and soups and so on in the Tetra Packs. Turn over the Tetra Pack and look on the back because you're going to see the name of the company, the address of the company, um, and, and please, if you want to take action on this, write them a letter and tell them that you know about hot filling, that you're not going to buy their product anymore and ask them to redesign it um, and to provide the soup or the nut milk or whatever it is in a glass jar um, instead of a Tetra Pak. Um, you know, that's an example of, of something you can do. Um, We've actually uh, seen oyster mushrooms showing up in styrofoam containers. Um, sometimes they're in compostable containers. So I actually called the company and said, well, can you, you know, please provide them um, without the packaging, you know, is, a, is another idea. Um, you know, we really don't need the packaging. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I think companies do listen to feedback, but I think we need to, be it needs to be lots of people asking them for change so what we did was we um when i did those talks with the vegetarian society on oahu maui and Kauai, we had letters for people to sign to those tetra pack uh, um company the companies using tetra packs for their products asking them to redesign um and use glass Restoring. Um, so restoring is about refurbishing and, and um, cleaning, washing, refinishing something in order to make it look new again. Um, we had fun last year with some dirty old rusty sign holders that, you know, someone on Craigslist was giving away for free because they were closing down their warehouse. They had all this junk they wanted to just throw in a dumpster and take it to the landfill. Um, and they put it on Craigslist, luckily, and we went down there. And um, I don't know how we found out, but we found out later on that we could actually get some um, tin foil and make a ball with it and some water or some Coke. I think we found both water and Coke worked equally well. Um, and you wet the tin foil and you rub in a circular motion and it actually got all the rust off these stands and so on and they look new again. Um, so there's, there's lots of things you can refinish, um, you know, like furniture and so on, put some nice new coverings on it made of, you know, organic cotton or something nice. Um, uh, like that, um, rather than throwing it out. Um, and restoration also applies to the environment. So you can do cleanups anywhere, roadside cleanup, beach cleanup, park cleanup, you know, community cleanup um, to help restore the environment. Reclaiming. So, you know, donate items that you don't want so someone else can reclaim them or reclaim items other people don't want, um, such as I was mentioning, you know, looking on Craigslist or I don't know about where you guys live, but where we live, they have sometimes um, junk on the side of the road um, for bulky item pickup. And we've found so many things on the side of the road, like lounge um lounges and tables and chairs and so on that that are perfectly good that people are throwing out um and so we brought them back to our workplace um and use them every day 
respecting. So um, the three R's, they're not just about, you know, actions and so on like that, but they're also about a mindset. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have so much to be grateful for and appreciate. I mean, during this presentation, how many times have we breathed in and breathed out and all that beautiful oxygen that we're breathing, um, more than 50% of it's coming from the ocean. Um, and it's so important that we make choices that, res that are respectful for nature and show our gratitude and appreciation for the earth, the ocean, and the, the beautiful life that we have um, as a result of, you know, the oxygen, the water, the, the earth that grows our food. Um, you know, it's, it's just so important that we show respect and do respectful things. So on the left, you can see this horrible situation where the city here put in plastic grass. <laughs> they actually dug up native species, um, beautiful shrubs and things and replaced it with this, this horrible plastic grass. It's overgrown, as you can see, with weeds and vines and so on. Um, and what the plastic grass does, it's like having a plastic carpet <laughs> on the ground. Um, it stops water from reaching the water table. It contaminates the ground with microplastics and chemicals. Um, it harms microorganisms. And, you know, if you were to remove it, you'd actually have to do soil remediation, which would take a really long time in order to ever grow something there again um, successfully. I mean, of course, you've got some weeds there, but... Um, you know, there's parts of that where there, there's chemical contamination um, and so on. So it's just, why do it, you know, when there's plenty of native ground covers that would work? Or even if you don't want to put plants, you could put pavers and rock, make a rock garden or something like that. Any of that's better than putting plastic on there. Um, and, and when you think about the animals, um, the little birds that get all the grubs and insects and, and so on out of the, the ground. I mean, what are they going to eat? Um, it's just really, really terrible um, and shouldn't happen. Um, and then on the right hand side, we've got the situation of one of the public parks that we went to and there were just pieces of water balloon, like hundreds and hundreds of them scattered all throughout the pine needles. Um, and, and this is after the people left. They were camping there, um, played with the water balloons and then left all the mess behind. Um, yeah, so it's really sad. So uh, rethinking, this is a good one, is, is take the information um, about the plastics and the chemicals and all of that um, and use it to your advantage to rethink your choices. Like, isn't it great you know more? <laughs> you know, it's a good thing to know more, not a bad thing, because now you have choices that you didn't know you had before. Um, because, you know, many of us didn't know, like when we were buying those Tetra packs off the shelf, we didn't know that they were being hot filled. We didn't know that they were lined with plastic. We didn't know that... Um, you know, the cookies and the cereal and the this and the that were being put hot into plastic packaging with phthalates in it and all this. Um, but now we know all of that. We have choices and we can make those choices for a better planet and for um, better health. Um, so it's, it's a way of thinking, a mindset. Um, and you can also inspire others um, by rethinking what you're doing. Um, so what can you do more of? What can you do better? And what do you want to support? Um, and one of the most loving things you can do, of course, is put healthy food into your body, healthy vegan food, plant uh, derived food into your body. Um, but is that food uh, healthy if it's in some kind of plastic packaging, you know, that has all these chemicals leaching into it. 
Um, or is that food healthy if you're, put, if you're using a plastic bag and putting hot food into that plastic bag because it's going to leach chemicals or eating at a restaurant where they dunk the plastic packet into boiling water? Um, that's not you know, loving to your body um, and the earth. So um, making these choices uh, to, to do what's right for you is also going to be right for the earth and vice versa. Um, and it's a loving thing that you can do is to believe that you're worth it. You're worth it. Like, yes, maybe the glass bottle of vitamins or the glass bottle of vinegar or whatever it is might cost a little bit more, but in the long run, it's the loving thing to do for yourself and the loving thing to do for the earth. Um, and, you know, and you're worth it, you know, you deserve that. Redirecting. So, um, Redirect your support to environmentally responsible companies. What do you want to support? So whatever you're spending your money on is what companies are going to make more of. And the more of us who redirect our support towards the good things and away from the bad things, um, we're going to be more successful in getting change possible. So in other words, you can make a big difference by voting with your dollars and buy more of what you want to see more of and avoid spending money on the things that aren't healthy for the environment or your health. Um, so some examples of good things to support like reef safe sunscreen in a metal tin, vegan yogurt in a glass jar, shampoo soap wrapped in paper. I mean, those are all good things to direct your support to. Researching. So this is this is important, I think, is to know what you're buying, like read those ingredient labels. Does it have PMMA in it? Has it got copolymers or cross polymers? Does it have polypropylene, polyethylene, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, styrene, polyester, etc.? These all mean plastic. So Avoid being taken in by plastic greenwashing as well. Like if it says ocean plastic, oh my goodness, avoid it. Run, run, run away. Um, why? Because as I mentioned at the beginning, um, another name for ocean plastic is marine debris. They've termed it ocean plastic because they make they want to make it sound nicer and sound fancy because they're they're integrating this so-called ocean plastic into high, supposedly high fashion and all this sort of a thing. But really, when you're talking ocean plastic, you're talking pops, chemicals, now heavy metals, now possibly pharmaceuticals, you know, all these nasty things attaching onto that so-called ocean plastic. So um, please don't support that, don't buy it. Um, Recyclable, well, a lot of plastic isn't even recyclable um, and biodegradable. As I mentioned before, it doesn't dissolve, it doesn't biodegrade and so on. Um, so I really suggest um, for personal care products, for detergents, um, you know, food and so on is just read those labels. Return, so, you can return packaging and containers and crates and things like that to the store. Um, and we can also return to um, a previous time where it was a less wasteful way of being um, and less wasteful ways um, and values. Rediscover. So rediscovering what people did before plastic existed. Um, so uh, one thing we're doing is making our own tooth powder. Um, and Dean found that the earliest form of tooth powder was actually um, used by ancient Egyptian as far back as 5000 BC. And this powder consisted of crushed eggshells, pumice, ash, and myrrh. Um, here's our 
recipe that we got off the internet um, using four tablespoons of bentonite clay, three tablespoons of calcium powder, one tablespoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of powdered mint. Well, that's optional. And I actually have tried um, two tablespoons of cacao powder, actually, because you can then have chocolate tooth, tooth powder. Um, and here's some other options is a tablespoon of cinnamon power, powder, a teaspoon of cloves, um, and you can also add essential oils such as peppermint, spearmint, and cinnamon. So that's, I use um, tooth powder. It's kind of fun to, you know, make the recipe a little different each time. Um, and, you know, there's, there's wooden toys and games for kids that, that um, you know, don't have any plastic in them. Um, gardening and landscaping, uh, it's just sad, you know, when you look out um, sometimes at, at even state, lands and so on and they're covered in plastic and I guess because they're trying to prevent weeds and so on um, but really what they need to be doing is getting all the nice mulch and mulching all the plants um, so that they um, can uh, grow healthily with lots of microbes in the soil and all of that. Building materials I mean these days people are putting up plastic fences, styrofoam on roofs, um, and so on, um, you know, we need to go back to nature and to use wooden fences, um, plastic fences. What they're doing is off gassing PVC, which is very dangerous. Um, they, uh, if they caught fire, that it would be, uh, you know, awful. <laughs> the fire department would have to wear um, respirators because that's how dangerous pvc is it doesn't actually burn it more smokes um and at the end of the life span of a plastic fence it just has to go in the landfill because it's too toxic to burn um and it produces greenhouse gases as well uh personal care products before the mid 1990s uh, personal care products like scrubs and so on, they came with sand, salt, crushed shells and things like that to cause the scrubbing part of the product. But then in the mid 90s, plastics started being added to these products. And a lot of what the plastics there for is not really much of the scrubbing because they're round. Um, so they're more used in, you know, have been used in toothpaste and so on as bulking agents so that you're buying more plastic, less product. Um, so luckily the Federal Mi Microbead Free Waters Act came in in 2015, banning um, companies from making products with rinse off products with microbeads in them. Um, but unfortunately, all of the stay on products like sunscreen and skin cream and makeup and so on still may have microbeads or plastic in them. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's nice to make your own products, actually. Um, and that's why we like doing things like our own tooth powder. Renting, so you don't always have to have stuff, you know. Another thing that you can do is to rent tools if you need them. So many tools these days are now made of plastic. They used to be made of wood and metal and so on. Um, and there's, these days there's tool libraries where you can um, borrow tools. And, of course, regular libraries have books and videos and, and CDs and things like that. Now we get to recycling. So we did lots of other things first. Um, so with recycling, I'm not going to be recommending recycling plastic at all. Um, so I hope with your list of, you know, the four things that you don't put recycled plastic down on it because where's it going to go, you know? China doesn't want it. Malaysia doesn't want it. Um, you know, and only 1% of the plastic ever gets recycled. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's just kind of a myth that you can just throw all this plastic with a triangle in a recycle bin and something great's going to happen to it. Because what really happens is that first up, it's contaminated because it may not have been cleaned properly and there might be food still on it and sticky drink and all this. Uh, then there's the wrong kind of plastic in there and there could be foils and seals and metal sprays and this and that, you know, so some of it's probably going to be thrown out or a lot of it is going to be thrown out. And then the stuff that actually does make it to the factory uh, for recycling is going to have new raw material added to it. And this, the, the thing in the circle there, those are called nurdles, N-U-R-D-L-E-S. This is the raw material for plastic. This is, this comes from oil and chemicals are added to that. So they can't make a new plastic item without adding more raw materials that come from oil, a fossil, non-renewable fossil fuel. Um, so really recycling is of plastic isn't that great at all. But glass is great. You can recycle glass back into a glass item without having to use new material. Same with metal, you can get metal cans and make them back into metal cans. Paper's good for recycling, cardboard's good for recycling. So I recommend those ones. Responsibility. So, um, you know, we're all responsible for taking care of our planet as human beings, because our actions affect the planet and as you can see from what's going on with plastic being found in the blood, in babies' poop, and lungs, you know, and of course we already knew that um, fish are eating it and it's all through the, the ocean and so on. I mean, humans have done a pretty terrible job of looking after the planet so far. And, you know, scientists are even talking about the Anthropocene era which is human caused damage to the environment being measured in the future by the layer of plastic that is um, on the earth. Um, so we, we all need to do as much as we can um, to reduce our plastic footprint. Um, and, and that means using less, being less wasteful, doing responsible actions, making responsible choices, um, you know, like not releasing balloons, not using water balloons, um, not littering, even the small things. Um, and, you know, other responsible actions can include giving time or money to help a cause, um, donating. And even one person can make a difference. But together, we can all make a major difference. So I hope everybody takes action today um, with their therefore, well, their first thing on their list, what they're going to do today. Um, and so one of the causes is ours. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit more about our organization. We're a 501c3 nonprofit founded in 2006. We bring awareness and solutions to plastic marine debris through environmental education, marine debris removal and research, and plastic reduction litter prevention campaigns in order to inspire actions by individuals in the community that save and protect Hawaii's marine life, seabirds and ocean coastal environment. Here's some photographs of our work, uh, volunteers out on the beach using various methods to remove debris from small items using sand sifters and rakes to very large items like the net you can see there. Um, this is me at the end of that 50 foot rope bundle. We had to actually cut it into pieces to get it off the shoreline. This is Kuhuku before our cleanup and after the cleanup. This is on the island of Oahu. This is all marine debris. This is not beach go trash. This is a very isolated part of um, the island. This is Camillo Beach. Uh, this one's a very difficult beach to get to. You have to drive on a four wheel drive um, for the last hour of a three hour journey um, over 
lava fields to get there. Um, there's no houses nearby. There's no water. There's nothing. Um, and the ocean is just vomiting up all this trash. Um, and this is a photo of before um, Dean and I cleaning up and after. And so this is the effort of two days of marine debris removal, um, working from sunup to sundown. Uh, and the two of us removed over 4 million pieces of plastic marine debris from that shoreline. Researching include, uh, involves a lot of sorting, um, sorting the trash into different types. And microplastic marine debris sorting is very, very tedious because we're working with very tiny pieces of plastic. We do environmental education in schools in the community, um, including this art project that we did with kids where they use the debris to paint and draw um, about the harm that it does to animals, um, as well as another project involving solutions and the books are in the state library system. We've done many plastic reduction and litter prevention campaigns and actions including, as I mentioned, getting beaches smoke-free. This is on Maui, we're doing some outreach. Uh, we got all the beaches, uh, smoking ban on all beaches throughout the whole state, as well as in all the counties, except for one. <laughs> and this is uh, the balloon release ban that we successfully passed in 2021. Uh, we, we do actions where we get um, people to sign petitions asking for change and uh, legislation. Uh, and we've done many other things. We, we got polystyrene foam band um, on Oahu, Maui, Big Island, uh, plastic straws band, um, all kinds of disposable items, plastic bags, lots of actions on plastic bags. Our latest one has been microbeads, the um, stay on products. And that bill passed all the way through both the House and Senate. And we're just waiting to, to find out if it gets through the final, uh, final hoop. Um, and then it'll go to the governor for signing. Um, this is a list of some actions that people can take. So if you haven't got anything on your list yet, I'm going to, do we have, still have some time, Chef AJ? A little bit, sure. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to run through these really, really quick. Um, so fish and seafood, as I mentioned, is the largest contributor. So we're recommending to be ocean friendly, not to buy fish and seafood. Um, as I mentioned, don't buy pods for clothes and dishwashing, roofing material, avoid styrofoam, coffee, don't use K-cups um, and so on for food and drinks, um, avoid Tetra packs and avoid buying it in plastic wherever you can. Um, also don't buy drinks with six, six pack rings. Black plastic, don't use it because it's made of recycled toxic e-waste. Tea bags, buy loose leaf tea in bulk or buy tea bags that are made from paper or wrapped in paper. Um, tie up your bags of rubbish securely because if you just um, decide to go, you know, plastic free or something and just put it all loose in your bin, it's actually going to create more um, rubbish because it flies around and out of the garbage truck. Produce bags, as I mentioned, using reusable cotton produce bags. Food wrap, you can use wax wrap instead of plastic wrap. Utensils, um, reusable bamboo utensils or metal utensils, bring them to work and so on. Using a water filter at home or work um, and don't use those um, five gallon water dispensers because they leach BPA into the water. Drink bottles, you can use your own glass of stainless steel reusable bottle. Straws, um, say no thanks for the straw. Uh, no thanks to straws when you get a drink. Uh, use your own reusable stainless steel glass or bamboo straws um, or metal straws. 
Stirrers, you can use a spoon to stir your drink, your coffee, instead of a plastic stirrer um, or using wooden ones. Um, bring your own uh, reusable drink container for hot drinks made of ceramic or stainless steel. Bring your own reusable bag, reusable glass or stainless steel containers for takeout food or request 100% compostable containers. Never get food in styrofoam. Avoid plastic coated paper boxes as well, by the way, because of the PFASs in them. Uh, leftovers, bring your own glass or stainless steel containers to the restaurant in a reusable bag so that you can bring your leftovers home. Hot food, bring your own insulated reusable stainless steel food container to work. Traveling, as I mentioned before, bringing your own reusable bag, cotton produce bag, utensil set and all of that, um, you know, uh, whoops. And uh, one thing I like about tooth powder actually is you can bring it through security. <laughs> Um, if you're having events, um, look for 100% compostable cups, plates, bowls, utensils, or those made of natural materials such as palm leaf plates and birchware, etc. cetera. Um, and then other ways to help is, is just vote with your dollars for safer choices. Call the company of the products, write a letter, donate to organizations um, and volunteer. And the levels of action that you can take are at home, at work, with your family and friends. So on that level, um, you can make action happen with groups you associate with. Like if you're with a club and they're going to have an event, then you can suggest, well, let's all bring our own cups or let's all have compostable or, or hand, hand food, finger food, you know, so you don't have to have any um, plastic at all or any disposables at all. Um, the third level of action, contacting companies, like I was saying, um, to get change happen on that level. And the fourth level is enacting new law or getting new laws introduced at the local and state level, which in means go and talk to your council member, your state representative, and let them know, hey, you know, I want to see, you know, balloon releases banned, smoking ban, plastic bags ban, whatever it is. So this is Earth Month um, and Earth Day is coming up on Friday and I want to wish you all a very, very happy Earth Day. But I also want to say let's make every day Earth Day because we've all got to take steps every day to be conscious about our planet and protect it um, and give it the love it needs, um, because it just needs so much help, um, because of what's going on, all the environmental, uh, bad choices that people are making. We need to all be making good choices to counteract that. So show your love, um, for the planet every day and for yourselves, because those actions that you're going to take for you are good for the planet and the actions for the, good for the planet are good for you so go forth in love and peace and happy earth day well happy earth day and thank you for helping our mother we have a few questions if you have time suzanne yeah sure okay and kathy wants to know how long do the beaches take to get full of plastic garbage again after the amazing cleanup the next day or sometimes the same day Wow, that's, if you want, you can stop screen share if you'd like, then, oh, you'll, yeah, sure. then we'll be able to Thanks. see you a little bit bigger. And she also wanted to know, is anything being done? I guess some beaches allow cars to drive up on beaches. And what about uh, when people are cremated and they dump it in the ocean? Oh, okay, cars. So cars are, um, it's actually illegal to drive on beaches in Hawaii. I think different states have different laws. Um, but it is a problem, people driving on beaches, because when you've got marine debris on a beach and then a car drives on it, it actually cracks and breaks it faster into smaller and smaller pieces. So it's really bad. Um, cremating, um, you know, I, I don't want to be cremated <laughs> when I go because I don't feel that that's a healthy good thing to do for our planet i think that we we're all from nature and we need to go back to nature um and i'm i'm actually wanting to find a um a natural burial site 
um, because then you can be buried in, you know, caught in shroud in straight in the ground without all of that nasty um, embalming fluids and so on. Um, so yeah, it's probably pretty awful what people are putting in the ocean, um, you know, because likely it's got uh, everything that, that went into the furnace, including the casket, I guess, with all the, the plastic and, um, you know, all the embalming fluid and all that sort of thing. Yeah, not terribly nice. Yeah, I want to thank Bent Vegan Trucker for the super chat donation. You know, when you mentioned about how sushi has that little plastic, I, that, that always drove, I never understood like, it's not even pretty. It's, it'd be different if it was like a piece of parsley, but that always drove me crazy. Like, why is it there? Yeah, well, apparently, according to my um, friends who know about that, um, it's there for taste to separate the ginger from the sushi uh, or the wasabi from the sushi. Um, so they're not touching. Um which is kind of funny because when people eat the sushi, they're actually going to dip it in there anyway. Um, but apparently in the olden days, um, it used to be like, you know, a piece of a palm leaf or some kind of a leaf, you know, a real leaf, not a plastic leaf. Wow. Lisa says, is bamboo clothing a good choice? Yes, I think so. Yes. Especially, I don't know if there's organic bamboo clothing. I think there is. Um, but yeah, I, I would recommend that nice do you have volunteers for your organization if somebody wanted to do more either in person or virtually absolutely we do yes uh, we're doing both at the moment um in fact if any of the listeners speak another language we need you <laughs> because we're looking at debris from at least about 20 countries right now and we need a lot of help with um, translating what is on that debris so that we can look for the source. So if you like detective work and you um, can help us, um, please get in touch. Did you ever think about writing a book and putting all this information in the book? I did actually, just haven't had time to do it. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much to do when you're running a nonprofit and you've got this massive research project um, going on. Um, there's just no time to do anything else. But when we get to the end of that, hopefully um, this year, I'm really looking forward to putting a lot of this information into a book. That'd be fabulous. Is there a list of like companies that like, I, I mean, no, I don't think anybody's perfect, but do you have like a list of those that are just better for us to support? Uh, that's a great idea. We definitely, we've been thinking about writing a list of the companies that aren't doing a good job in our, in our research, but yes, we should counter that by having a list of all the good companies. Um, you can see some of them on our website, um, on our, um, support us page and so on, because we, we have their products. Um, but I can also recommend to you beat the microbeads website because if you're looking specifically about um, at personal care products, they have the red list, the green list, the orange list, and so on, um, where you can see if a company is good, whether their product is good, and whether it has microbeads and microplastic or not. Great. Oh, and you. by the way, I want to plug also, they have a letter. Um, that you can sign. It only takes a couple of seconds um, and you can go on their website and sign that letter. Um, and it will go to 10 companies asking them to take plastic out of their products. Wow. Thank you. Atia says salads come in bags. Where are salads supposed to come in? <laughs> as, as I mentioned earlier, I think they should come as they were out of the ground with all the dirty outer lettuce leaves on them and so on you know I think we need to go back to that because why are they taking the lettuce leaves off anyway like I don't understand that why why isn't it how it was um it didn't matter that it was a little dirty um you know it was quite good actually because then you knew that no one had touched all the 
in our lettuce leaves, you know, in the supermarket. Um, so that's how I think salad should come. Um, yeah. I hear you. So uh, this question from Blue Jay is also on my mind. I already have a pooch. What's the best way of picking up their waste on walks? Paper may maybe. So are none of those bags acceptable, Suzanne? You know, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Because it's a yeah. lot, at least where I live, to pick up the poop. So, you know, I said at the beginning, we can't go plastic free. We can't go zero waste and all this sort of thing. Um, and try as you might. <laughs> Still things show up in the box from Amazon or wherever it comes from in some kind of a plastic bag, like you order a T-shirt and it comes in a plastic bag. Even though you didn't want the plastic bag, you didn't order a plastic bag, you ordered a T-shirt, comes in a plastic bag. Um, or the rice is in a plastic bag. Or, you know, there's just so many items that you buy at the supermarket that come in some kind of plastic packaging, um, even the dried goods. So what we do is we carefully cut off the top of that packet and put it away and then we bring it out. So when we have to do the, the cat poop um, or chicken poop or whatever it is, um, then, well, not the chicken poop, but the cat poop, um, we actually reuse all those bags. So we've never had to buy any, um, any bags for, you know, dog or cat poop because we just have excess bags even though we're trying to be as plastic free as possible um you know it's it's kind of impossible i agree kathy says does oprah still have a house in hawaii she needs to know about your organization maybe you could get her involved <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea um i believe she does have a house on maui um yeah Right. And uh, there's a question. What do you think of silicone? I knew I'd get that question again. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say about silicone because really it can have additives in it. So I think that it depends on the individual company and the product. I would do your research, investigate, find out, you know, um, how good it is, what kind of um, additives are in it um, to be able to make your own decision on silicone. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been such a wealth of information. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, again, I want to really wish you all a very happy Earth Day and Earth Month. And and uh, hope I hope there were lots of good um, ideas in the chat box, were there? Well, not as many as you gave. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully they were listening and writing, but so many yeah. of the things you said about like, I mean, I don't eat at restaurants, but if I did, like, even if they give a straw, you don't have to open it and use it. For example. That's true. Um, you can give it back. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, you know, the thing, the thing that, that troubles me, and this is, I haven't eaten when I say sushi, I'm talking about plant-based sushi, you know, vegan mm -hmm. sushi, that's like avocado rolls. I haven't eaten in over 11 years, but when I lived in LA, I used to go to this place called farm boy next door and get their avocado rolls. And it always bothered me. It came in plastic. And I said, please, can, can I give this back to you? Can you just refill it? No, you know, because they had rules. Like they wouldn't, they wouldn't put the new sushi. Do, do you know what I'm saying? They, they, they yeah. just wouldn't do it. Well, when we still ate sushi, which we don't, but when we still ate vegan sushi, um, we would actually call ahead and tell them, hey, we're bringing our own glass bowls. And then they'd put the sushi straight in the bowl for us. That's great. Well, there, you've just given us so much food for thought. <laughs> great. Oh, well, I'm really pleased. Um, you know, it's it's we all need to take action, right? And it's only through those efforts that change is going to be possible and we've got to do it today so i hope everyone's got their today thing ready to do right, right. yeah thank, thanks so much Susanna. Thank i really you. appreciate your work and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live please come back in about an hour at 2 p.m pacific time my guest 
guest is Kathy Catan Grazini, and she has a brand new book called Love the Foods That Love You Back, Clean, Healthy, Vegan Recipes for Everyone. And she is going to be preparing a beautiful Moroccan orange radish salad with an apricot lemon dressing, whole food plant-based SOS-free. Happy Earth Day, Suzanne. Yeah, aloha. 